Hi, Mr. Russell. My name is Amin Kessler. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela. A big fan of the show. What show? Yes. El FPP, directamente. Desde Caracas, Venezuela, los fanáticos, o creo que el único fanático. Así que, thanks for all the support and all the big tips that from you guys, you give us all the analog shooters worldwide. Saludos. Yo. Hey, this is Mike Rosso. We're here at the Film Photography Podcast, the internet radio show for people who love to shoot film. FPP 80. Wow. Yeah, right. Wow, is right. FPP 80, uh, April 15th, 2013. I'm here in the studio with Dane Johnson. Hello. And Mark Dalzell. Hiya. On today's show, we're going to be talking about shooting X-ray film. That's right. You heard correctly. X-ray film. Sounds kooky? It is. Mark's baby crap graphic. Baby crown graphic. The graphics, baby graphic. What is it actually called? It's called the century graphic. Oh, Mark century, century. graphic. What is it? We're going to find out. Smoovacrome. We're going to talk about the new Smooth mm-hmm. Seller album. Dane's featured camera today is? Uh, I got an RB67 Ooh. with uh, a that's couple different backs. That's incredible. Couple different lenses. A monster. The it's, a, it's, a, it's a boat anchor. Look at the size of it. Oh, I can't beat him. Uh, the Fantasy Camera Guy. Do you have the info on that guy? I do, yeah. Okay, we're just going to call him that for now. Okay. Lots of listener letters and so much more. We'll be back. Photography enters the computer age with the revolutionary new Canon T70. Computer program to give you all the answers with total push button control. Auto loading, auto wind on, auto wind off. That's the incredible Canon T70. So advanced it's got to be simple. Canon Formula One cameras. Hey, we're back. Hey, guys. What's going hey, on? Nice to see you guys. You too. Yeah. So the big news around the studio is the release of the new Smooth Sailor album. That's right. Yep. Smooth Chrome. Smooth Chrome. Thanks to you. I saw. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. I uh, I'm handpicked all That's the right. songs you from. Spent a year listening to music. I did. <laughs> that was a uh, yeah. That was a lot to go through. The Smooth Sailors, for people who don't know, is a uh, music group made up of uh, Mark here, Dame here. Uh, John Fideli. Not present. Not present. Kevin Neblung. Not present. Alan, Kenichi, Joseph. Dave, if he's on our hemisphere. Dave. It's a group. It's kind of a collective. You'll see sometimes. Everybody. Yeah. And yeah. these guys get together every Tuesday night, and they come in with an idea, and they record it live. And whatever they record gets reco- recorded to, uh, well, I say tape. Recorded to tape. <laughs> yeah, well, now it is. Tape. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is tape at the moment. Last, uh, we did our first session yesterday with a uh, with real tape, reel to reel. Recorded to tape, and then whatever sticks, sticks. And that's the recording. Yep, and that's it. We never go back. We never play it again. We never uh, touch up the mixes. All we do is... Okay, occasionally do you play some cuts live? Like, if you have, oh my god, we have a gig. Yeah, if we have in the past, then, you know, the few gigs we've had where we actually have relearned, like, a set and kind of... It's still improvised a certain it's amount. It's nothing like the recording. Yeah, it's, and even the rehearsals, you know, nothing like each rehearsal, in the, each, each gig. We don't know where it's going to go. You'll rehearse a set to do live. Yeah, it's kind of like you get some ideas, some riffs together, and it goes here, goes there, and we try to like work it out as a full set so it kind of like flows together as one big smooth monster well, we'll be at a gig and, I, and you know we end up doing okay what's next shafted which one is that <laughs> yeah I remember it's just the one in E you were playing yeah. violin I think okay oh, whatever yeah, got just it. go yeah right. so that's, it'll uh, come back to me so yeah but normally no it's like we come in we mix the, we work it out right away jam it get a take right. mix it and then uh, what you know the only difference we did with, uh, with like the smooth chrome stuff is I actually went back and you know, mastered them properly because they're recorded over so many different times. You know, you know, there's different instrumentation, sometimes different rooms. There were right. three different rooms on that yeah. album because some of those were recorded in Cubase, some of them were yeah. Pro Tools, they were all over the place. And so, the, and they're in different formats. So, the idea of the kind of equalizing right. them all and, you know, getting them all this so they pump and pop more. Yeah, now you got that done pretty quick. Was it 
going back to those tracks and doing a, a mix for actual release, what is that time consuming or? Well, it's more like just finding the mixes we did and then uh, you know giving them a you know a shine kind of thing. Okay. More like giving them a, a, a bump, a pump, whatever. Did you re-output? You had mentioned Wave versus MP3. Did mm. you actually re-encode them? No, we didn't have to do that. That was they're already every time we mix them, I always mix them down at, at 20, the high res 24 bit. But the ones I put on the website are just MP3s because they're quick to download. They play straight from the page, and right. so uh, so that's the difference between you know we everybody's like oh you give all your tracks away why are we gonna go buy this and. For one thing, is there's 600 something tracks on the page, and they're all in MP3 format. They were, and you know, who you want to go dig around, go ahead. But the fact that you went and put together a piece of, you know, that plays from beginning to end, you know, right, and it's an like album. hand-picked album out of that. I mean, I'd buy that. You know, if someone, you know, <laughs> you, get, you get 640 by 480 for free. If yeah. you want the 1600 by 1200, you got to yeah. pay for it. There you go. It's yeah. uh, convenient. Photographers we're talking. Yeah. It's convenient. Otherwise, you yeah. have to pick through the page. Yeah, and it sounds better. And yeah, and it's it's available. You just download the. You know, that's the way I think we're going to just keep doing it in the future. Is you know. Yeah. So so, so thesmoothsellers dot com. I noticed if you go there now, you see the album. Mm-hmm. There's a link to CD Baby to yep. buy it. Yep. But there's also you can actually play the album on the site, right? Sure, you can. Yeah, you can play it through SoundCloud, the SoundCloud player. We can you can play it right there. Oh, very nice. So Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. Uh, Sp- it's on Spotify. It's on uh, Amazon. It's on iTunes. Don't think it's on Pandora. No. Uh, it wouldn't endorse tough. I don't yeah. understand. Oh, it's curated. And if someone listening is like, oh man, I want to check out that album, mm-hmm. you can type into Google The Smooth Sailors. Better than that, you can type into Google Smooth, the word smooth. Oh, okay. And we are, I think, number two. S M O O V E. That's it. Or the album, S M O O V A C H R O M E, Smooth Chrome. It. And then all the links come up. Amazon. Yeah. And then you get you can't help but run into it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter where yeah. you are. If you're in the iTunes store, if you're on Google Play, if you're on Amazon, if Spotify, you know, any of that type smooth sailors and Spotify, you can listen to the whole album if you're more of a Spotify listener. Well, if uh you're curious, folks out there, if you want to send some feedback, uh, you can reach us at podcast at filmphotographyproject dot com. You can drop us a line, tell us about the album or tell us about what you know, what's up with you. And last show what show? Uh, we uh, announced that we have a little hotline here. You can call. No one will pick up the phone. It's rec- you know, you, you'll get a recording. You'll get. This is know, not a live show. Yeah, no, you'll get a recording, <laughs> and it. Hey, you can call that number, and you know, as long as you send, make a nice, short, clean message. We'll play it on the show. Sure. So the number is here. The number here is preferably area- photography related. And so you folks out there can call nine seven three. That's the area code eight five zero six three three zero. You'll get a machine and leave a message, and we'll we'll play your recording. You know, hey, my name is so and so, and I shoot with the. Canon A1, and I love it, or I love the show, or, hey, go tell John from Fuzz. <laughs> <No>. Yeah. <laughs> so great. So move Chrome. Check that out. And in a few weeks, our fine audience, you folks out there, are going to hear our update on what happened at the FPP meetup in Finlay, Ohio, Ooh. our walking workshop. We're going to have a show from Finlay, Ohio. In a few weeks, we're also going to have some shows with our special guest, Darren Ballard-Riley. That's right. What's your favorite flavor? Formerly Darren, Darren Pancho Riley. And he will, he's coming in from the UK, and he's going to be spending two weeks here in the US, in New York, and there's going to be all sorts of shenanigans going on. More on that coming up very soon. Uh, let's do a few letters. A quick shout out to people out there who have uh, sent us stuff. Here is a letter from our good friend, Mary Virginia. She is up in top of the world, I think Alaska. Oh, this is Miss Merv. She actually sent us some awesome Polaroids. Pass these around. I just, just you taking it out of the envelope. A handwritten letter folded over a stack of look. Polaroid oh, pictures. It's that's so beautiful. such a good look. It is. And her letterhead is a Polaroid 440. Dear Michael and the FPP gang, a big hello from the top of the world. I have been listening to the podcast for about a year now, and I am a huge fan. Thanks to you, my serious case of gas has turned epic. Gas, of course, yes. is gear a- acquisition syndrome, the inability to stop collecting cameras. In an effort to show my husband I really don't intend to drown us in cameras, I have two cameras for you. The Nikon N80 should be in perfect working order. It never gets used, so I want to pass it on for a happier life. It's not really rugged enough for the Arctic. The second yeah. camera is a Polaroid a friend of mine uh, found. Sadly, it has problems, but I wanted to send it in case it was perhaps an easy 
easy fix. It doesn't eject photos all the way. I hope it's possible to revive it. Thanks for doing such a great job on the podcast. I love listening in our cold, dark winter days while my son naps. Maybe one day I can come down for a meetup or convince you all come up to the Arctic, LOL, exclamation point. Keep up the good work and enjoy looking at the pictures of Barrow, Alaska. I sent along. Sincerely, Mary, Virginia. And that's pretty awesome. And I would love to go to Alaska. I have visions of John Carpenter's The Thing. Us all bundled yes. up with our cameras and our parkas. You know. That's great. right. That, that makes sense. I've been up as far as uh, Juneau, but uh, never as far as Barrow. That is far. I know you gentlemen have been through a lot. And when you find the time, I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this yellow couch! Uh, here's a letter. I don't know who this is from. It just says, hey, send me a freaking camera already. <laughs> oh, that's me. It's from the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the clue is it's from the Graham Tool Company in Orange, California, and I can't make out the, the signature. Can you guys? Dear FP, this is uh, another card came in. It's a beautiful postcard of a re- red scale double exposure. It says, Dear FPP, thanks for handling this situation in the manner you chose to. Thank you for inspiring me to buy a Polaroid and for representing them so well. I enjoy the podcast. Keep it up. V. Gray. And I guess V. Gray purchased a camera from our film photography store, filmphotographystore.com. We have all sorts of stuff. Polaroids, Polaroid film, Impossible film, Kodak film, Ilford film. It really is the place you guys should should think about checking it out. Uh, our good friend Jay Leeming in Australia. Uh, St. Leonard's. Where is St. Leonard's? Is that in Australia? NSW State. New South Wales. Yeah. Oh, New South Wales. That's Australia. Yeah. It is Australia. Okay. I just want to thank you for sending the box of stuff that you did, including some films, 100-foot rolls of films. Damn. The, it's awesome. I really, really appreciate wow. it. Wow. We're doing a lot of experimenting with rolling our own here at the FPP. That's right. You guys like to read, uh, or you rather me just keep reading them? Here you go. Mark, here's a letter from Mark. It's a, you gave me a long one. Hi, Michael. I'm a new regular listener of your website as well as of your podcast. Great work from you all. No sweat. I'm already registered in your website under the membership name Film Forever. No joke. <laughs> I'm also a Flickr member under the name of Inukshuk, although I don't, think, I don't link it with my membership in FPP. Here's a little story about film. A few months ago, I went to a recycle center to bring over some old batteries for environmental reasons. While talking to the guy in charge, I mentioned I love shooting film. The guy said he has something for me, a whole shoebox of black and white medium format 120 Mm -hmm. expired film. I see. Between 2004 and 2009, that's barely expired. It was amazing. The guy did not know how it ended up in his recycle center. I assume that those film must have been found by executors of a will not knowing what to do with old film. Who knows? After listening to some of your podcast episodes, I thought I could share some of these films. A pack of four Kodak T-Max 400 and two rolls of Agfa APX 400 for donation, of course. By the way, in the same box, I found a 35mm roll of Neopan 1600, a film that is unfortunately discontinued. This film was obviously shot, and the subject was the 2007 Montreal Jazz Festival, as it was written on the tape on the cartridge. I developed the film and found some pretty good shots of jazz performers. Actually, I know someone who played at the 2007 Montreal Jazz Festival. I wonder if Nabuki's on there. Ah... Uh, you can see them in the small diorama on my blog. Let me know by Flickr mail if you're interested to take a look at it. I would, I could reconfigure the diaporama on YouTube if you want. I also have a small pack of 20 Kodak color paper sheets called Ectacolor Supra 2 that was Ooh. given to me. Although I don't print color, only black and white. If someone's interested, let me know. I will directly give it away. Another, by the way, I realized that I passed not far by your place uh, in Butler, New Jersey. When I, went, yeah, when I went to New York City for the first time in 2011, I had a room in a motel in Bergen. <laughs> <laughs> I am crazy for your sound effects, especially the one saying Gossin Luna Pro F. Ooh. Gossin Luna Pro F. Fantastic. Best of luck, guys. Alain Gauthier in Montreal. Wow. A, a, uh, ho- a motel in Bergen could be a little dicey, right? I've never been there. I think like Lincoln Motel. You know that Lincoln, yeah. infamous Lincoln Motel? Well, I'm familiar with Tonnelly Avenue and like the Starlight and all. You know, oh, that yeah. Kind of, that's what I think of. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Starlight. By the uh, hour. Yeah. They've got the honeymoon suite and that's right. free color television. Here is Dear Mike, John, Matt, Lauren, Strudel, and the rest of the FPP gang. I guess that would be you guys. Yeah, I guess we're the rest. <laughs> and and etc. First of all, let me thank you for one of the best and most entertaining podcasts out there. You have helped me rekindle my love for photography and helped me to branch out into some formats I would have not thought of trying. When I was a kid, like in my early 20s, all I all thought there was was Kodak, Kodak Gold 435mm. Yep. Yep. Like, there was no, not even a thought 
to try anything else. Yeah. It's my Canon AE1. Yeah. You go to the drugstore, get film. That's it. That's it. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about here. One of my current faves is Polaroid pack film and cameras. They really do take great-looking pictures. That's right. I also work with 35, and I'm starting to do some 120. Not only have you guys re- rekindled my love of film, but my enthusiasms for all things photography has come back to life. I know this can be, might be a th- dirty word, but my digital enthusiasm has increased as well. That's positive. Hey, absolutely. That's fine. Right? Nothing wrong with that. He shoots with a Canon AE1, mm-hmm. Canonet QL17, Ooh, Polaroid one. 100, yep. 420, yep. SX70, yep. Olga 120, yep. uh, New Belair from a Lamography, uh, okay. and digitally a Canon 60D 1D Mark II. I love them all. Don't know nothing about the two digital ones, but yeah, those other, that's a good collection of uh, that is. film shots. Ooh. He says, uh, oh, thanks again for the great shoes. Bitch. No good? Yeah, I, don't, I guess I gotta keep. Did you? Did you flash me? I, I didn't think I did. Yes, you did. Oh, yeah. I did? Yeah. All right. I didn't know it was on. Thank you for the great Dun. shoes. And before I forget, I, I would like to tell you that my iPhone now has some Pink Delicates music on it. Oh. It's a from my 486. Thank you, Doug. Doug Broadkey. Doug, it sounds like you might like the new Smooth Sellers album. I think uh, you would. Yeah, Absolutely. Dan, do you have a thingamajig that you could look up, or, what do you need to- or did you look up that travel wide, that new camera, the the Kickstarter? I lo- I didn't look it up. I saw the Kickstarter thing, but the big the four by five thing. That's uh, it's pretty cool. If you Google search travel wide camera, does yeah. it come up? At the time of this taping, something called a travel wide four by five camera came up on Kickstarter. So if, if, I guess you can go to Kickstarter.com yeah, and look sure. it up. Definitely. And this is it's also it's in the. Flickr form if you're on Flickr and FPP. Yeah, I don't have the information it. in front of me. It's too new as of this taping. Two guys from Chicago. <laughs> two guys Walk from Chicago yeah, right. came up with a, a model for a camera that I believe is based upon Peter Galland. Galland used to make cameras, and he had some kind of portable 4x5 he made, or maybe 8x10. These guys were, were um, inspired by some of Peter Galland's cameras and came up with, to me, looks like a pack camera, like a yeah. color pack 2. Yeah, right, it's solid. Yeah. But bigger, that takes 4x5 film, sheet film, and it takes also the uh, 4x5 lenses. You have a choice, I think, of 65 or 90. They're different models, and they did a prototype in something that's called a 3D printer, which is a printer by the way, that's going to change the way things are done mm-hmm. in the next two years. Would you guys agree that yep, things absolutely. are going to change? Yep. I wish I had one. Yep, that's right. I mean, right. here are two guys designing, marketing a camera on Kickstarter. Yep. Just a few years ago, it would not have been possible because they would have not been able to put the prototype no. together. Nope. They would have had to put capital together to yep. get a prototype made. Like, the world is changing so rapidly. Oh, they're three, rapidly. 3D printing houses now. And yeah. they've even got the plans for, like, the next moon bases. They're going to do, like, or a moon base. They're gonna, they've already figured out how they're going to be able to print it, the parts and then put them all together. A big printer. In space. A big-ass printer. Or, they, it's, or many, many small parts. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys put a prototype together of the camera. And if you go to Kickstarter, they have different levels. But if you kick in X amount of dollars, you could actually basically, you know, earmark a camera for mm-hmm. yourself. That's true. Yeah, $99. And you get the the base camera without the lens. You get the free one. Yeah, the lenses are all sold separately, but um, or not. They, they don't even sell them separately. I mean, you have to find the lens on your own, but otherwise, it's all there. This is going to definitely whet the appetite for people. I know a lot of people listening who are into 35 millimeter, who make their way to 120, are itching to try 4x5. Mm-hmm. Lots of listeners have sent letters that they're itching to try 4x5, and I think this will really uh, jumpstart that. It's almost in a sense like if Lomography released a 4x5 mm-hmm. camera. Easy yep. to use, you know, if you take it in the field, you throw it in your bag. Right. Uh, focusing is simple, rangefinder focusing. So I wish these guys a lot of luck. The camera weighs like a pound. You yeah. Know, it's really yeah. easy to drag around. Yeah. If you can not. Bellows, you don't have to unfold it. And, yeah. You know. If you can't find this link anywhere you could email us podcast at filmphotographyproject.com say hey what are you guys talking about that 4x5 portable yeah. camera and we'll you know I'll hook you up uh, a lot of exciting news here guys before we get to our main cameras I did a video recently on the FPP YouTube page for a Kodak Hawkeye brownie flash do you guys have those yep a yep. little square. A little, yeah, they're great. Little brownie. And I put a link to uh, the Brownie camera page. It's brownie-camera.com. You familiar with that page? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's run by Chuck Baker. So I set, put a link on my video for the, the Brownie camera page, and I sent an email to Chuck. And I said, hey, man, 
I just did a video, and uh, I put a link to your page. So he wrote back. He's like, hey, man, thanks. He didn't actually say, hey, man. Hey, no, man. No. says, thanks. I listen to you guys. Oh. I've linked back from my friend's page, you know, our podcast, and he's like, keep up the good work, and don't forget about Pinhole Day. <laughs> ah, so, yeah. So, we still, so I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, Pinhole Day, which brings me to a link he sent me. So folks out there listening, April 28th this year, 2013, I'm guessing it's every April 28th. Mm-hmm. It's called the Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day. And there's a website which is called pinholeday.org. So you can go there and see what it's all about. And a pinhole camera, of course, is a very simple camera that doesn't have a lens but has a pinhole in it, mm-hmm. which has a lens cap over the. I know so little about it. That's very, you're getting very technical here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there's a lens cap over the pinhole so you can load your film, you put it on the tripod. You remove the lens cap, and now you are exposing. And I guess based upon the size of the pinhole, you could have a camera that could have what? Like a 12-day exposure? Yeah, yeah. days and days. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Or if the pinhole's big enough, it'll be, I don't know, a minute. Well, the cam- yeah, the, the one I made is like, uh, what was it? F-190-something, and I get like on a super sunny day, I do about five minutes. Jeez. So, well, the guide small... is, if you already own a pinhole camera, A, test your camera to make sure it's functioning. Buy film paper or other light-sensitive material. If you don't have a pinhole camera, build one. Test it to become familiar with it. Process the film to see if it works. Train your pinhole vision and begin thinking of the future WPP Day picture. Start thinking about what picture you're going to take. I've gotten quite a few emails about Pinhole Camera Day, including an email from our good friend Ross, who you may know as Artie Photos on... Oh, yeah. Art E Photos. Oh, Ross the Boss. That's right. (laughs) That's Art, A-R-T. Space Y space F O T O S. He says, Aloha. I can't read that without thinking of <laughs> Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Aloha, Mr. Hand. Oh, jeez. And thanks for the kind words expressed during the podcast regarding my photo card and the and pin debonair. debonair. I sent him a busted debonair. Yeah. And he made a pinhole camera. Oh, cool. By the way, the pin debonair, which is here somewhere in this mess. Uh, Ross, it's here. It's going to be tested before pinhole day, I want you to know. Uh, it has a 26-millimeter focal length, 0.21-millimeter pinhole, handmade, and is F-125. There's a lot of fun mods on the Debonairs I've seen. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Everything from pinhole to the, full, the fully manual one there that someone made. Now, what pinhole camera did you make? Uh, I've got, uh, it used to be a Polaroid 220. Okay. And I took the viewfinder off the top and took all the guts out and put in the... It works? Yeah, it works great. And the nice thing about it is since it shoots onto pack film, I can see immediately if my picture actually worked or not. So it's good for sort of learning how to use a pinhole because you don't have to wait a week to right. get a blank roll back and realize, oh. I bought the one on eBay, the guy that sells them on eBay. Uh, Canon, it's a lens, Canon lens cap. Like an e, I had an EOS I wanted to try it on. So it was an ca- EOS lens cap that this guy puts the, the aluminum and laser pops it. It's like, 20, it's, a, it's like a body cap. 23, yeah, body cap. That's it. Oh, body Sorry, cap. Body cap. Take yeah. the lens off, put the body cap on. Yeah, yeah. and then the, bo- well, the body cap is, he's modified it with a piece of a, a little piece of aluminum or whatever, and he laser cuts something in it mm-hmm. at the right you know, distance. And uh, yeah, it looks cool. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's, ex- and it's not, it's one that's not like minutes pinhole. So maybe it's a bigger pinhole. It's, that know. must be a pretty big hole. I mean, it's so close to the film plane too. Because we're doing like 30 second right. and it's, and it's Well, fine. the center's supposed to be sharp, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, but the bigger the hole, the, the shorter the exposure and the blurrier the picture. Yeah. Artie Photos I mean. images on Flickr are amazing. Yeah. Like they're he's, super sharp. They're yeah. super amazing. Yeah, that's, that's different. You just yeah. got to have like a super I'm not seeing hole. that and in mine. Yeah. Ross, you must <laughs> have a super patience too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's you true. know, I've been trying to really slow down my photography. You know, our good friend Jim Austin I wrote a blog. Jim will appreciate yeah, it. Slow yeah. photo- I have to tell you, it's tough. Yeah. It's yeah. tough to slow down. Because yeah. I'm always moving so gosh darn yeah, fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pinhole camera day. Super positive. That's right. That'll be fun. And you've got those cardboard kits, too. That yeah, i got to put those together. together. So, like, my sister gave me one last year or something, and then somebody else got one. And it's old pain in the ass putting them together. But, you know, yeah. I'll get around to it when I have about four hours of yeah, right. time. Patience. And, yeah, right. Here's an email from Joshua Green. He says, I want to th- express my gratitude for winning the FPP giveaway. Ooh. I had one of those, I'm trying to figure out what he won. I had one of those crappy days at work. When I got home, I was surprised to see a package from you guys. It's always great to get a package in the mail, oh, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It really is. Nice handwritten label on the outside. Absolutely. Right. At first, I was confused to see something from you guys, as the box looked a little too big for, for a 110 cartridge. <laughs> By the way, b- loving the Orca. I mm-hmm. guess Joshua buys yep. from the store. With hesitation, I opened it up. <laughs> 
Like, what does he expect? Like, oh, like a mogul? I don't know. Like anthrax. I put on my fire suit and it's carefully opened powder it. I opened it up and was enthralled to see a camera looking up back at me. Then it hit me. A few weeks earlier, I submitted to, in the FPP giveaway. I loaded it up. I'm trying to figure out what it was. <laughs> I loaded it up with that wonderful T Max you supplied and cannot wait to try it out. You sent him that Leica, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the 1.2 on it. He says, uh, so one of these days when you see see me in my car barreling down the highway with FPP stickers plastered on the back with a cannon. Oh, ah, a so cannon it must have been the, the A1. With, that you, or yeah. maybe the EF. We gave away an EF. Oh, yeah. A really rugged EF. Yeah. Just think, you were the ones who sent it to me, and you got the ball rolling with my love for film. Sweet. Joshua. Is this like the Green. old, uh, remember the old old days of the radio stations? That, like they would have like the prize van driving around, and if they saw a car with a oh, bumper yeah, sticker, they'd yeah. pull you over and give you some cash? You whip it out Wednesdays. So you just like throw rolls of film into people's windows. It's super amazing. You know, it's funny. I had all these letters <laughs> lined up before the show. Now that we're ro- you know, recording the show, it seems like the letters have multiplied. <laughs> Maybe they wrote each other. I slipped a bunch of fake ones in there. You did? Yeah. Oh, here's a quick one from our good friend Donald Duff McCracken. Ah, uh, John's not here to do the accent. No, he's not. Yeah. He says... <laughs> Everything goes quiet. Shucks. <laughs> I found out that Film Rescue International, that's filmrescue.com, is thinking about doing a small-scale run of disc film. Have yes. You, you heard about this? I totally can't wait for this. Oh, I got a disc question whenever you're done with that. This is really... I hope I can have a disc answer. <laughs> this is really <laughs> awesome. I think they need your help. No, they don't need my help. I, I, I sent an email. They don't need my help. They just want people to buy it. Yeah, that's uh, what they need help with. Yeah. <laughs> buy some. Uh, they're not doing it for cash because it is crazy, <laughs> and these guys clearly love film. Uh, I did. I sent them an email. I want to know about wholesaling it for the FPP store, and they said that they're not doing it for money. They're doing a quick run. They're going to sell it just for kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think maybe you buy the film and the processing. Okay. I think it's a combo. That would make sense because it's hard to process. But folks out there, you can go to filmrescue.com. I can tell both you gents that I've had no luck with disc film yet. Uh, I can't even find a camera that works. Yeah. What, what, I got about what, a dozen well, of them. Really? Do they work? Yep. You have cameras that work. I actually shot a disc uh, a month or so ago, and when I developed it, it was blank. The, far, the film was too far gone. But oh. I have, I have four or five sealed discs what in my you, fridge. What did you pan developed? Yeah, I just dropped it in the bottom of my bucket and just shook it. <laughs> now, where, like, say you got a bunch of disc film, uh, where do you send it? Does the darkroom do it? The darkroom. The darkroom does yeah. it. Okay. Joseph's got a friend that uh, has a pile of discs, and he was asking him, and he, so I can tell him to shoot it to the oh, darkroom. I wonder Develop, if... but unexposed discs? Yeah, from, like, the 80s. Oh. Yeah. Dwayne's, Dwayne's photo. Dwayne's? Also. Okay. Dwayne, they're in Parsons, Kansas. Okay. They both do disc. Disc was my first camera, so I kind of always have a soft spot for that. Even though once I develop it, I'm going to be like, eh, whatever. What's well, it run to do a disc nowadays? Oh, I wonder. I is it 20, 30, 15, to, to develop? 10? I don't know. Can't yeah. be that much. No. I don't know. Yeah. And then before I eat my words, I'm going to check the website to see if the darkroom does disc. Oh, okay. I know they do APS. Yep. So I'm thinking they do disc as well. Okay, because they, they do all the 110 every possible thing. Yeah. Too. And now the dark, that's the darkroom.com. Now they do 4x5 and 8x10 sheet film as well. That's great. It is great. Wow. But not 116? They'll do 116. I thought they didn't. Yes. Oh, okay, good. Good to know. Uh, here's a quick letter from uh, Darry. Hi, guys. Want to say hi. Thank you so much for taking the time and effort to film the podcast. Uh, oh. Some people think that the YouTube little short videos mm-hmm. is the podcast. Oh. oh. It could be. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but it could is. be. I have learned so much from your YouTube channel. You guys are all very inspiring. I'm 19 years old from New York City. And I recently started doing film photography on my own with no classes. Very nice. Wow. I've just been reading books and watching your videos. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Darry. Good education. Here's a quick letter from Nick Miller. I'll have uh, Mr. Mark read that. Just listened to a couple of episodes of the podcast. Wanted to send you a quick note to keep doing whatever you are doing on the podcast. Audio quality is the smoothest I have heard on any podcast. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, that is. And the main guy, whatever his name is, has a radio voice real easy to listen to. That's me. My name is Mark. <laughs> whatever he is. As does the main chick, whatever her name is. Oh, that's me. Mellifluous, euphonious. There's some words for you. Love it. Except for, Except those, for those reverbs, reverbs and, echoes. and echoes. Bloody hell. Hello, hello. It's, like, it's like, overdone like overdone HDR, HDR goo, goo in my ears. ears. Wow, that, that went <laughs> way downhill. It's surfing. And then the rest, and of, the rest of it's just a bunch of profanity, and he spit on the page. Oh, wow. That's not spit. Is he talking about... He says chick. It could be Leslie. Could, could be, be John. Could be Lauren. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Bloody, don't know. Hell. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. What is he in the who? He's Australian. Well, the thing is, I've, I've learned to all of my sound effects these days. C41. One, two, three, forget about it. Dawson Luna Pro F. 
I bring them down. Early on, I didn't bring them down. So uh, people listening on headphones, yeah, yeah, yeah. they, they get old. blown out. Yeah, I guess so. Especially when they were like actual explosions. Yeah, I know. That would do it. Well, that'll teach them. Buy some speakers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is from David Sandler. He says, so I have Seattle Filmworks 35 oh. process SFW-XL. It has a carbon backing. I cannot remove any tips on removing the backing. I ruined a roll of that myself. How did you? Did you process it as black I, and white? I just assumed it was C41. Oh. I didn't realize there was a different thing out there. Yeah, so that's I'm an idiot. Stuff. It's a proprietary uh, process that no longer exists by the Seattle Filmworks company. Years ago in the 1990s, I used to buy their film, and the film was free. Mm-hmm. So you send them a roll C41, they process it, and then send you a their film. SS Interesting. SFW-XL. Safe and, for work. And then you would send it back to them, and from that roll of film, you could get prints, slides, or both. It was pretty cool. And they were one of the first people to put them on disc for you. Oh, the wow. The year was 1994. On a wow. floppy? Yeah, Windows 3. Yeah. Windows 311. 311. Yeah. That's it. So those were the days. Film Joke. has, if you process it in black and white, it has some kind of rem backing well, so on now, it. So now, yeah, I was going to say, now back to his original question. Yes. <laughs> which is, what do you do with the, with the backing? I, I haven't experienced it, but I've experienced it on polychrome film, which is, it's like a black layer, and I just put, for polychrome, in warm water, and the, the goo layer kind of just lifts apart. What about, like, the bleaching, like we do on the Polaroid negatives? Is it, like, the same kind of thing? I didn't, mm, I didn't yeah. bleach the polychrome. It just kind of no. came off by itself no. in warm water. I would suggest warm water first. And if that don't work, break out the bleach. Uh, if it's on the shiny side, it should be okay, but you don't want to, like, bleach your no, I know. emulsion. No, right no, no, no. We'll never listen to anything I say anyway. So, David. Well, but like we do for the, the <laughs> negatives, is you tape it, tape it down. Ma- I it have, like, a box full of Seattle Filmworks film. My best answer is not to shoot it. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Seriously, like, I don't yeah. shoot it. Yeah. I just kind of look at it. Yeah, hmm. because I don't think it's really going to yield anything that nice. Mm-hmm. You guys haven't shot any recently. I just had that one roll. I actually bought a camera that had a roll in it, and I finished off the roll, and then I tried to develop it C41, and it stripped it. I'm going to shoot a roll and send it to uh, Dark Room. <laughs> see what yeah, they, see what they can do. <laughs> see uh, what they come yeah, up with. Mr. Resso, I don't know about this. Watch, watch for the phone call from them saying uh, no. Yeah, but the film was free. So if you sent in three rolls of film, they would send you three rolls back for free. So. There are thousands of rolls of film. Like if you go to eBay right now, you'll come up with lots of it. That's so. an interesting idea. And they could only have done that having a proprietary system that you had no choice but to send it back to them. So Yeah. And their idea. service was so good that why not? Yeah. Justin Murnett. Justin Murnett says, So right. You guys like shoegaze. Well, I do. Me too. Shoegaze, shoegaze is a type, is of, type of music, of music hmm. that uses a lot of echo. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's, the, the name, name came, came from, from, I believe, British, British bands, bands who, who they would just look it down with their pedals, pedals when mm-hmm. they're playing. So they're Shoot. looking at their shoes. <laughs> shoegaze. It's funny. Uh, I feel yeah. that way most of the time. He says, my yeah. favorites are low, slow dive, uh, Seeger Ross. Seeger Ross. Yeah. Seeger Ross. Yeah. Code 46 soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, Grace Cathedral Park and Joy Division. There you go. Technically, I'm not a shoegazer, but if Joy Division came on, I wouldn't get up from lying on the floor to change the song. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ricky Shehorn, like the female, like a female bull. Greetings from Delaware. Huh. I just got caught up listening to your shoes, and I'm patiently waiting for the next episode. Well, that's today. <laughs> <laughs> I would like, <laughs> I would like to hear you guys talk about developing film at home with caffeinol. Oh yeah, oh, that's all you. Too. Apparently, you can develop black and white film with a mixture of instant coffee granules, soda ash, which is washing soda, and vitamin C powder. I want to, at some point, try this method. Which brings me to another topic, scanning negatives. Do you guys have any solutions to scanning negatives without fancy-schmancy negative scanner? Well, you need to have a backlit scanner, you know, at least uh, that. But otherwise, yeah, you just tape it to the glass. But you have to have something that lights Can up. you tape your negatives to, like, your window glass and shoot it digitally? As Matt calls it, hobo scanning? <laughs> nice. You yes. can, right? Yeah. Of course you could. Yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't. I mean, the color's going to be all wacky. It would be better putting it on a light table or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Hobo scanning. If you're shooting 120, especially, hobo scanning would work just fine. Just have a... a yeah, with a, these, like, nowadays, a phone has a 13 megapixel camera on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah, take absolutely. a picture with your phone. Like that Lomo thing they got. Uh, regarding caffeinol, there, there is a caffeinol cookbook online. If you Google search caffeinol, or, or even if you go to filmphotographyproject.com, that's our website, and you search caffeinol, we have two, three, four blogs published about caffeinol. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that I am the most ghetto user of caffeinol on the planet. That's what I, re- that's what I develop with. I use caffeinol for everything. And 
I've taken the formula, which was Darren Pancho Riley's formula, mm-hmm. and I've simplified it where I use instant coffee, not, not decaf, has to be caffeinated. Mm-hmm. I don't use any vitamin C. So I go caffeinol, a water rinse. So this, my stop bath is just water. Mm-hmm. And then the only chemical I have is fixer. So 30 minutes in the caffeinol. 30 minutes. 30 yeah, minutes. Takes a while. Okay. Uh, I do a <laughs> quick five minute, five minute or less wa- you know, wash with water. And then into the fixer for like another five minutes, and then I'm done. Mm-hmm. No vitamin C, and I have the formula, and I will. I will. It's so easy and simple. I'll put it in the show mm-hmm. notes. I want you okay. to sit down one day in the studio and. Show yeah, us. we got to do some. Oh, I'll I come in. I'll do it. At, uh, do it on a smooth night. A smooth tech. Yeah, smooth tech. That's it. Yeah, I'll gladly do it. Smooth tech. That's it. About a week or so ago, uh, Mark. <laughs> Mark and I did a film tra- uh, a film trade. I saw a bunch of old, really old black and white film at Smoove. Uh huh. And Mark's like, ah. I got literally a shoulder bag full of film on eBay. Mark's like, ah, I don't really have any interest in this stuff. I'm looking at it, and this is stuff I love. Pan- Panatomic X, which is is it uh, panatomically correct? It, which is originally ASA 32. This is 1979. Jeez, so you got to shoot it one. I'm not going to shoot this at like, I don't know. ASA 10. There you go. That's a good number. Uh, and some Kodak Tri-X from 1970. And I one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rolls of film. Mark's like, okay, you owe me seven rolls of film. Good film. I have a five-pack of Ooh. tested, batch-tested, beautiful Kodak Ektachrome 100. Oh, this 19 sweet. Vintage slide film. That's some Olympic stuff vintage, right there. You, I have to tell you, Mark, you already pre-agreed to this. We discussed this already. I know. Now, you need to, he's, he, you're regretting it. No, I'm not. It's just, uh, I, I'm an instant gratification guy, and whenever I shoot slide film, I know I've got like a week of sadness while I ship it out waiting uh, to get the slides back. <laughs> shoot more Polaroid. I would, I, I would rate <laughs> that as, Thank uh, you. Oh, you're very welcome. I would rate that at like ASA... 25? Wow. No, 96. 50? It's almost 20 years old, so... How many stops? Two stops. Should be two stop and a half. Yeah, I'll rate it uh, at uh, ISO um, thirty-eight and a quarter. For yeah. real? Uh, that low? No, I don't know. We, fifty. I bet you're going to rate it at fifty. I'll do fifty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also have uh, apparently, which is very rare and hard to find, Ag for Pan four hundred. I have Thank a roll you. of that. You gave me a while back. I, I have a roll of this. That. I have a roll of this in an Ag for camera at the moment. I'm very proud. Ooh. I hand rolled a roll of. Uh, Fuji blue x-ray film for you. Nice. This is cool. Yeah. Nice. This I'm looking forward to. Now, we're going to talk about x-ray film right now. That roll of film is cut x-ray film. It's three strips of 8x10 cut and then taped together. All right. That's so going to be a good look. Don't, yeah. don't roll that through your Mamiya 645. Just strip it. I'm afraid that, it's, that, that magazine is too, too good. You need something simple. Like a debonair yeah. would be perfect. Like, yeah, a toy. Yeah, a toy debonair. Yeah. But you know what? That's ASA thirty. Uh, oh yeah, it wouldn't be ASA no, twenty five. No, no B on a debonair. Uh, like a, all, you, or how about this baby? Yeah. This looks very simple. What one twenty cameras do you have? You must have a simple TLR. I do. I think the um, yeah, yeah either the I've got the Mamiya C two twenty, the C three, or the Yashica one twenty four. Yeah, any of those. They're fairly simple. I or wouldn't want guy. to run it through the Rolly because the Rolly actually has a really interesting feature that it can detect when there's film in the They'll camera and when it bumps over the tape strip at me. You want a simple weird. roll? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll put it through the Yashica. I love my Yashica. Oh, or one that of these. Would be perfect. Yeah, I one love these those. Guys. But the, once again, the ASA is so low. We just use it on the time setting. I mean, the, you know, oh, that's yeah. all I yeah. have those cameras. I just shoot on time, anyways. I'll figure something out. Okay. And if you, do you guys have trays at the Smooth Tech? No. Oh, you don't have trays? What do we do? We got Tupperware. Well, I mean, we can, I mean, we can, can go to the dollar tray, store. Yeah. And okay. Tray, right? Because that needs to be tray processed. So what I do oh, is, right, uh, so here we well, have. Well, in, in the dark. That's I could, cool. I could we should get into some tray it and put it into my reels, though. Right. Uh, well, I'll set it up for you guys. There are two types of x-ray film that Matt Mirage suggested. Uh, green x-ray film or blue x-ray film. It's daylight sensitive. It needs to be shot in daylight or in a uh, faux daylight, like an HMI light. Mm-hmm. That is actually uh, simulated daylight because of, um, and I'm not technical, and Matt, we actually have a role in the show. Matt's going to give us all the details about this film because I'm your layperson of laypersons when it comes to this. It's like it sees sunlight. <laughs> so it's only seeing certain lights. It's like keyed to 5600K or something. Or whatever. So yeah. for X- X-ray film, wow. which you could buy right in our FPP store, Kodak makes it, Fuji makes it. There's some no-name brands out there. Uh, it could be... 
it could be loaded and processed in a seven watt red light, so you don't have to do it in the dark. No. Oh. So I was my my interest was peaked when Matt started shooting X ray film, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh my god, I got like, what is this stuff? Right. Right. So I bought some, and since it can be loaded, unloaded in a room with a red light, I. St- I was like, oh, I'm just going to cut yeah. it to four by five. Nice, yeah. And then I said, because it's kind of thick, I'm like, oh, what if I cut it in strips? Yeah, sure. And put it on some backing paper and roll my own 120, which I did. And by the way, um, Mark, I tested already. Great. I ran a roll through Yashika. So this roll has been exposed already? Right. No, I, I didn't <laughs> It's going to be a double up. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, it looked cool on the four by fives you did. They were I love the ones that you up. scratched yeah. up. That was awesome. I was, that's what I'm all about right there. That I processed me... in a tray and I, and I was like kind of yeah, manhandling well, with it. With like a couple of Zacto knives and, and stuff. In a tray right? of sand. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, right. strangely enough, those scratches, awesome. they're curved, so it's the bottom of the tray. Wow, yeah. that's, that's awesome. That's all it is, the bottom of the tray. So when Matt had said, oh, it's very sensitive to scratches, I mean, he wasn't kidding. Yeah. yeah so the cool. second batch I did came out almost 100% cool. mm-hmm. and clear. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing That's great. With Just I've, a few mm. scratches. I've been into the idea of interesting films recently. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with that and the the. Polypan and all the wacky stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Polypan F. The laboratoire stuff. So that's it. let's let's roll Matt's segment in on uh, shooting X-ray film, and then after that we'll take a quick break. Hey out there, FPPers, Matt Mirage here. I'm here to talk to you guys today about X-ray film. I know I've talked to you guys a little bit in the past about X-Ray Film. I've got some videos, I've got some blogs out there, and I highly suggest checking those out. But for those of you who are completely fresh, fresh, fresh. to the X-Ray Film revolution that's going on right now, X-Ray Film is an orthochromatic, which means it can't see red light, film that has two sides of emulsion, but it comes in all sorts, all sorts of huge, huge sizes. The standard size available is 8 by 10 inches, which if you head over to the FPP store right now, uh, Mr. Michael Rosso has been hard at work in the FPP workshop cutting it down by hand to four by five size which is just awesome this film is super cheap it's orthochromatic so it doesn't see red it sees blue light green light and a little bit of uv light so it's a great kind of old-timey landscape looking film really nice for portraits just all around has its own unique look. Now, it is a little touchy, guys. This stuff has emulsion on both sides of the film, so there's not a shiny side and a dull side. There's actually two dull sides to the film. But since it's uh, not sensitive to red, just like photographic papers, you can actually load this film and process this film under a safe light. Uh, I don't recommend the same kind of safe light you use for your overhead for your darkroom because x-ray film is much, much more sensitive than photographic paper. So if you use a little 7-watt Kodak Junior bulb, as they're called, a little little 7-watt red bulb, you'll be able to develop your film, process your film. So anybody that's new to the large format, or even if you're cutting this stuff down to 120, like like Mike, just completely off the wall is crazy. But you can do it for any format you can imagine. It's really great for a large format. This stuff comes 8 by 10, 10 by 12, 11 by 14, 11 by 17, 14 by 17, 16 by 20. 20 by 24, 14 by 36 inches, guys. I mean, this stuff is crazy. It's cheap. You got to get out there and try it. It's still readily available. We're talking 100 sheets for less than 50 bucks. You can't find any film, and I mean any film out there, for that price. It is spectacular. Once you get the hang of it, it just has a great look. You know, for the price, you can feel free to experiment. You can test out film holders. You can learn the whole large format workflow. It's just fantastic stuff, guys. So uh, we have some available at FPP store. You can check it out there. You can check out my blog posts, which are linked from the FPP site, or you can head over to mattmirage.com and check those out. We also have some YouTube videos from both uh, the FPP side of things and my own YouTube channel. So there's plenty of information out there, guys. Buy it up, try it out, and I guarantee you're going to have some fun. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Super positive.
Uh, hey, we're back, and you know, Mark's going to talk about some uh, some websites, right, Mark? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Oh, just uh, I, you know, you always have your book of the month, so I wanted to throw in a website of the month, and uh, we all know and love uh, Mike Bus- Mike Butkus's website for camera manuals, orphan cameras. Yes, orphan cameras. Um, but if you're a, uh, a technical type of person or if you have a broken camera or something that's not working quite right, you may or you should have seen uh, Rick Olson's URL, but it's Rick, R-I-C-K underscore O-L-E-S-O-N dot tripod dot com. Jeez, tripod's still tripod. around? Yeah, Jesus. I know. John still has an AOL email account. And yeah. this guy's what, is, what does that mean? What is the significance of tripod? It's old just school. old school. Oh, okay. Back in the day, they were like a... Uh, Whatever. Web it's surf. like if his if his phone number had Klondike in it. <laughs> but okay. uh, so it's it's I mean it's a it's a low tech website, but he has been fixing and breaking and disassembling cameras for decades, and he has these hand drawn pictures of ha- you know how to take apart certain cameras, how to fix a, you know an Argus C three shutter, how to do, what lens coatings are, how depth of field works. I mean everything you could ever want, and I I end up finding his drawings a lot when I'm searching for technical information. But then he also has this thing that's called the Tech Notes C. CD, which I actually bought. It's 20 bucks, and I got it, and it's like the Rosetta Stone. I don't know <laughs> what it is. Of I just sat there. I've, I literally sat there for hours and hours over a week just looking at every single one of these drawings, and I learned so much how to fix separating triplet lenses to you know just everything you could imagine. How to fix, yeah, actually, Mike, one of your Canon lenses I learned from his yeah, technology. That's, how to fix your that's right. Oh, so thank you, Rick, right? Yeah. I learned how to X sync my, my Argus C3. Oh, yeah, and, and he that, did, I mean, we did mine. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. There's so many little interesting tips and tricks and sketches and ideas, and yeah, it's totally worth $20. I highly recommend it. What is the website actually called? If you Google search it, how would you come up with it? Well, um, I, generally, if you, if you search like Canon AE1 shutter, you know, like if you just search a random problem, most likely he's one of those guys that'll come up at the top. Just like if you search for camera manual, Butkus comes up at the top. So, Rick, R-I-C-K. R-I-C-K. K O L O L E S O N. Okay. Very w- interesting stuff. Worth a look up. The, the website, most of his stuff is on the website, which is worth flipping through, but it's also totally worth throwing 20 bucks and getting the CD because the CD. I think it said that it has 5,000 drawings on the CD, and, uh, and yeah. I, and I now that Mark hours. almost has 5,000 cameras, you know, he's got to make sure yep, he I got one for each. But yeah, it's interesting because you can dig through, and I went, kind of went through all my cameras like, oh, I wonder if there's anything about the Kiev 4, and you drill down, and you find there's a directory on the Kiev 4 oh, really? with different, you know, oh, I wonder if there's anything on the Mamiya 645. Yep, there it is. You know, he's just got drawings for everything. Interesting. Which is really cool, so what anyway. A, what other website do you recommend? None. Oh, can you tell us about... <laughs> <laughs> Who is the fantasy camera guy? Oh, the fantasy camera guy. This is uh, this is a Flickr user. His username is I'm not sure if he's pro- if he pronounces it French or not, but Atelier Ying, um, and he is actually a street photographer. He lives in New York City, and he just kind of emailed me out of the blue a few weeks ago and said, "Hey, I saw your camera mods you do. There, you know, someone gave me your name, and uh, the stuff is really cool." And he added me as a contact, and I went and looked at his photo stream, and he actually is he, he sort of des- he's a gra- he, I guess he's a designer or an engineer or something but he actually designs cameras on his own website but the cameras he designs are these completely crazy fantasy cameras that are amazing so uh, uh, and he, he, on his Flickr stream is sketches that. out of his sketchbook so this is the like I brought a couple here um, the oh, VG Automat camera so they're, they're these crazy fantasy designs where it's like oh here's Here's a camera, but it actually opens up and serves sandwiches and apples, and you know. Oh, this really is fa- like Ouija's automat camera. Ouija looks like a guy who liked to eat. Oh, so an automat, you know, with those. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's yeah, like right. an automat. Yeah, so it's like a 30s style camera. I have another one here. Actually, I may build this camera because this is really cool. And what he did was this. It's a design for um, a Kodak Instamatic camera. Yeah. That when you pop the flash up, it's got a little tiny temple bell. And then out of the side, a little hammer comes out that you can ring the bell, and the hammer is also a key that opens up the back of the camera, and there's a 126 cartridge in it, <laughs> and inside the 126 cartridge is a sutra scroll. Oh, of course. That you can, so you can uh, intone your scroll. <gasps> I mean, just How really do you get to this? Stuff. How do you get to this? Well, his username on Flickr is Atelier Ying. Oh, look at that. A-T-E-L-I-E-R-Y-I-N-G. Uh, These pages are actually stuff. there on yep, Flickr? Yeah, his whole Flickr stream is, is um, all his notebook pages. and pic- I mean, he's a street photographer anyway, so pictures that he takes, but also these, these amazing fantasy Hold cameras that he, he comes up with. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of his stuff. <laughs> Talking about the Canon T90, you guys are listening in our our, our 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 what our banter, uh, the dreaded EEE error. 
Yeah. Oh, jeez. That happens. <laughs> okay. Bad, bad um, computer. I have a body that has a dreaded EEE era. As a matter of fact, uh, FPP correspondent Brian Moore was writing a blog, and it, it, I lent him my camera. It crapped out in the middle of him testing it. Yeah. I bought this on the bay. I think it was 50 bucks body only. Immediately, it seized up. Yeah. And it, like, the shutter wouldn't fire. So I did some some just Googling uh, on yeah. it, and I yeah. found the, the smack it on the ground. Ah, yes. It's like, take your lens off. And I, I found a few posts about this just, just on Flickr. It. It's like literally on a hardwood surface, smack it as hard as you can. And the guy's like, I can't recommend you doing this, but it worked for me. Wow. And then other people like, And the yeah. camera's not going to get any worse. So, yeah, right. And everyone else like, yeah, it worked for me too. And it worked for me. That's great. And now it's working great. And apparently there's some contact in here yeah. that just gets gunked over time. Yeah. It that needs to get needs exercise. A smack. It needs a smack. Now, you're talking to a guy who's like Mr. No Violence. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like, you know. <laughs> but you're like, but it kind of felt good. But like everything in the world is sort of like that. Like, you don't smack a child, but no. every now and then you smack needs a child. A smack. <laughs> Maybe you don't do it these days. No, no. You go Back to jail. Back when I was a kid. Go to jail for that. You know, they used yeah. to say, go pick a switch when I was growing up. Oh, really? Yeah. What does that mean? Go pick a switch. Go pick a switch. What does that mean? What do you think it means? Go out to the yard, pick a switch. Oh. Get a, go get, get a, a stick. stick. You know? Oh. Like, yeah, yeah. Go. I just read a story in the news last week about a, a woman <laughs> who her son got in trouble at school and he was going to be suspended. So she went to the school and she walked into the principal's office and just walked in and slapped the kid without realizing it was actually a different kid who was there. He was sick in the principal's <laughs> For real? office. So then, she walked over, so then she walked over and slapped her own kid well, you didn't. and has now been charged with two counts of assault. <laughs> So, for, yeah. for real, you don't no have slapping. To go and, I got my list here. What's on this sh- this show? It says what's new with John? <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> John's not here. He's home. <laughs> Beautiful. He's, he's home. <laughs> he's homesick with the sick kids. <laughs> yeah. well, we haven't take, taken many breaks this show, as you may have noticed. I wanted to let everyone out there know uh, we didn't take any breaks, but support the FPP. You can go to filmphotographyproject.com, dot com, and there's a donate button where you could send us stuff you're not using: film, cameras, money. Uh, we operate Jeez. like a New Jersey not for profit, but we're not registered as one, <laughs> which I'm actually looking into. No, oh. yeah, which I'm actually looking That's into. That's cool. All we right. all we're volunteers here. There's no salaries cut out of the FPP. Any monies just go back into the FPP and fuel our giveaways. And the cost of shipping these days is so expensive. Someone wins a camera um, and have to ship it to Australia. You know, we drop, you know, 40 bucks just to ship a camera these days. Yeah. We do have giveaways, which brings us to we're giving away. Uh, this actually was donated back by you, Dane. Oh, so yeah. Because oh, I fixed it. It's a Polaroid 220 automatic land camera. If you have not shot with an automatic land camera, it takes instant Peel film. It's awesome. It's now yeah. springtime. Now's the time to do it. Let's yep. have a contest. And when John was in the studio recently, we actually did a little pitch for this. Mm-hmm. So let's listen. Let's roll the audio tape. Hey, this week on the FPP, we're doing a giveaway. <gasps> what are we giving away, Mike? One of uh, Dane's cameras. It's marked fixed on it. It is. I, I may have given this to Dane, and he may have fixed it and given it back to me after he done finished shooting with it. What is it? Polaroid 220 automatic land camera. This is one of the cameras with bellows. Bellows. Takes Fuji hack film. That's the peel type film. Polaroid automatic land Shut camera. Up. It will be modified to take AAA batteries. AAA. Uh, if you have not shot, this is a contest for you folks out there. Uh, if you already own a Polaroid automatic land camera, I don't think you should try to win it because you already know what it is. Uh, this is a contest for people who've never shot with a Polaroid automatic land camera. Want to you, get their feet wet. Yeah, you want to get your feet wet. This is an awesome camera. And it will come with one pack of film. Just go to filmphotographyproject.com forward slash giveaways to try to win it. And then you, too, can own a Polaroid automatic land camera. And indulge yourself in the joys of instant photography. Oh, yes. Thank you much. Hey, we're back. Also, if I could just point out that the Film Photography Podcast, we have our own online store, which is like get going like gangbusters because we now carry uh, official seller of Kodak film. We have locked in some really good prices. We now have 4x5 sheet film. We now have oddball film like Polypan F. Oh, yeah. We have x-ray film. You check it out. Go to filmphotographystore.com. Check it out. The FPP debonair. You will not be disappointed. Pack film, impossible project film, lomography film, 110 film. It's to the point now where it can't be enough breaks because there's so many spots. Four by five. Four by five. Cheat film. Sheet. X ray film. Crazy, man. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy.
maybe we should, before we go, talk about what we mentioned we're going to talk about, which is that <laughs> baby crown graphic. Yeah, bring it. You have like a big printout and everything. Well, yeah, I, I wanted to be prepared if we were going to talk about it. But I was, uh, first of all, I own a 4x5 crown graphic, which we're not going to talk about this show, but we will talk about in the future because it is what's known as the entry-level 4x5 camera. It is press camera, meaning that men of the news... Ooh, men of the news. Good shot calendar. with it, like Ouija. Mm-hmm. If you watch any, like, Martin Scorsese film or The Godfather, or Francis Ford Coppola film, you always see the news guys. Classic. Yeah, the guy leans in with the press pass tucked in his hat and right that's it. you'll see uh, Sonny Corleone like <laughs> hey, like hey. like knock one out of a guy's hands and smash that's it right. to the ground that was oh yeah. that's right that was like oh that must have hurt yeah <laughs> i'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse you know yeah. so that's what guys used and it's a great entry level camera most come with a 135 millimeter lens which is kind of equivalent to like a 50 millimeter 35 millimeter, you know, and 35 millimeter photographer, the equivalent to. Mm-hmm. Do you know all those equivalents to? I don't. I know that it's, it's sort of double-ish or something, but I've yeah. never actually seen, I never really calculated it out. So but, I went yeah. to visit the Smooth Sailors on a Tuesday night rehearsal, and there's mm-hmm. Mark with like a miniature version of the Graflex crown graphic. I'm like, what is that? It is. In pictures, it just looks the same, but we, we should do a side-by-side with yours because it is like the, the salesman sample of a crown graphic. Yeah. What is it? This is the century graphic. So this was, I mean, even for them, it was it was billed as being like the entry-level model. You know, nowadays, I, I love it. Um, it's it Basically, it's, a, it's like a three-quarter scale crown graphic that only well, I shouldn't say only, but nowadays it only uses basically 120 roll film. Uh, there was a um, sheet film back for it that used, uh, I think it was two, two and a half by three and a half or two and a quarter by three and a half sheet film, which is pretty much totally obsolete and useless now anyway. But it's basically, it's, it's a crown graphic that, that already has the graph lock back built into it. Mm-hmm. So it just takes the, um, the graphic 23 roll film backs or the singer, the graphic singer backs or whatever um, but otherwise it's got the same CalArt uh, range finder on the side it's got you know everything else is the same the, the, the one I have in particular here has the uh, the Schneider uh, Xenotar 2.880 lens on it which is apparently I discovered afterwards the most desirable lens it came with a few different versions it must be the mustache yeah what is that flash bracket so, on the side this this is just the standard uh, the, the big graph Graflex stick flash oh, that no would kidding. be on the side I don't have that and where would it plug into uh, up, up on the top of the lens it's got uh, a pc adapter a pc okay. port with uh, m or x sync and this particular lens the uh, the schneider lens on it goes down to it's a it's an 80 millimeter lens on this thing it's 80 millimeter yep. lens uh and it goes down to 2.8 and it's got everything from time bulb one second all the way up to a 400 so it's you know pretty good lens um the camera itself not too heavy it's actually made out of a thing they they call the mahoganite which is really just bakelite it's a, you know it's like a plastic maybe it's a different brand of bakelite yeah, it's just there. I guess you know they didn't want it to be sound as plasticky, so they oh. so you know the, the crown graphics, which are made out of mahogany, they wanted it just you know so they called it mahoganite. Um, <laughs> but it's leather covered, you know, so it looks basically the same. It's got a, a proper coupled range finder on it. You can also actually, it's got these, um, it's got the little infinity locks that I can flip down, mm-hmm. and then I can bring it out for doing full on. You know, macro photography, I can, you can get down really, really close with it. And, and how would you focus for macro photography? Well, uh, these did come standard with a ground glass back. Okay. Mine doesn't have that, unfortunately. Uh, it didn't come with it. So I'll have to try and track now, one of those down. As a question, I was wondering, is there a way somebody can make their own ground glass with like a wire brush or with yeah. like a sandblaster? I don't know. Oh, to make your own ground glass? Like how would you, what would be the best way? SOS? Uh, I the, don't know. The grinding on it is so... Fine. I don't even know. Um, acid. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you could probably acid etch it. That, maybe yeah. that's how it's done. I mm-hmm. don't know. Just curious. Seems like something that would be nice to have around. But yeah, I would like to make a ground glass back for it because, or buy, or, or if I don't find one, make it. Because I'd like to be able to use some of the macro features of it, which mm-hmm. obviously the parallax is so far off on it, I, you can't do that. But How, common, it, how common is this camera? I, I had never even heard of it, but I don't know anything. But uh, if you look them up on eBay, there are always a few on <laughs> eBay. It's a great way to say. What yeah. are we talking about? Well, you know, I never heard of it, but I don't know I anything. It, I don't this know. seems to be in really nice shape. It looks awesome. Uh, this one is pretty good. If you look closely at mine, uh, it's actually been completely painted black. If somebody went nuts with a sharpie. So I think it was. Yeah, I think it was getting awesome. a little worn. So well, somebody actually went over it with black paint, but uh, you you really can't even tell. I, I didn't even realize it first. You did a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah, it looks perfect. Uh, uh, it's got a, and because it was kind of a modular system, you know, mine has the the, the rangefinder on the side, which didn't come with, which is excellent. Right. Um, I also have a parallax corrected 
viewfinder, which is really cool, which these definitely didn't come with. Yeah. So wow. depending on, on my range, I can turn this thing in and adjust for the parallax. Is this 1950s? This camera was made from uh, 49 to 72, actually. Holy mm. smokes. Wow. And uh, it came, like I said, it came with a few different lenses. But looks, what the way the, the print looks like 60s, like late 60s. Yeah, well, this one, the, the, the technical stuff on it says that the, the later production runs are the ones that came with the Schneider. So I don't know if this one came with the Schneider or what. Mm. Um, the serial number, I looked it up, and it, it seemed to put it around 65, 66. But, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if someone added this lens. Because this does have, like, a proper lens board on it, so I can, I can just pop the lens off. And so do you want to... Uh, out lenses and, so you're going to sell it or you're going to pawn it? Oh, never. <laughs> <laughs> what's with the flash on the side? What do you got? What's going on there? Uh, it does not... I, I just don't have my... I don't have the flash bracket attached to it, so I just... I plugged in an electronic flash and tucked it under the hand screen. Oh, it's just tucked uh, in there. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just tucked in. That's oh, actually okay. smart. That's great. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And you have... You do not have film processed yet from this? I... At, at this particular moment, no. In the next two days, I will. Oh, two days. So the, by the time we go to air, so to absolutely. speak. Absolutely. There'll be tons. Yeah, because I actually... The, the camera came with two roll backs, two of the 23 backs, both of which had almost fully shot rolls in them. Oh. In the bag was an exposed roll that hadn't been developed, and I have now shot two or three rolls. So I already have five or six rolls that I haven't even gotten yet, so i got to get on that. Hold it still. That's awesome. So that that's, is awesome. So that's my Century Graphic, which is a camera I didn't know existed until I bought it, and I, I totally love it. It's one of my favorite cameras today. Favorite camera of the month. Absolutely. Cool. Of yeah. the year, perhaps. This is in my top ten now. Yeah. Now, will you? How will you carry this around? Do you fold it up, or you don't bother? Uh, no, I always fold it up. It folds up really tiny, and uh, it came with a really nice, big, heavy-duty leather shoulder bag that everything fits nicely into. And it doesn't have a body. That's one of the other downsides of it. Is does does not have a body-mounted shutter trigger on it. But they do give you a little clip at the top right. so i can i can snap this into it i like that like shrink wrapped cord you got that styling yeah you know it's funny i found i found pictures of this camera from the 70s i mean not mine you know but mm -hmm. pictures of the century graphic with the same cable so i think mm -hmm. this is the cable that okay. came with the camera originally which is cool it looks like it's been around a little cigarette smoke there yeah and it fits in here just perfectly so. yeah uh well that that uh, brings great. us to the end of this shoe Sa sadly we're going to wrap up this show as a smell of flash bulbs. That's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, I want to thank everyone who wrote in. I want to thank everyone who sent packages in. Packages are coming in. It does take a month or two to get them processed and get me to get a note back to you. To thank you very much. Uh, cameras get processed. They get they get shelved. They get cataloged, and then we start giving them away on the show. Or in the case of what we just had, which, which, which was our film photography walking workshop in Finlay, Ohio, pack a huge bag of cameras, and we have giveaways. Giveaways, they're live on the spot, and we also have cameras that people can just check out and use on, the, on cool. the photo walks. That's a great That's idea. Cool. Yeah. So I hope in the near future that we'll have a more organized um, site, maybe, where people could um, do a, a rental or a trade, Ooh, yeah. you know, or hmm. borrow... Like borrow the camera, like have a catalog of cameras. Camera online. library, mm -hmm. a camera library where maybe you put a credit card down to reserve it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We haven't figured it out yet, but it would be great. That's pretty cool. People can kind of like just get a camera in the mail and play with it, and then either keep it with a donation mm -hmm. or give it back and then trade it for something. What's else. cool with that is you could actually get like some kind of a. You'd get certain people that have donated a lot of cameras, and maybe they have like a reserve. That's their collection. Right. And then someone could say, ooh, I want to get, you know, and then if you get somebody with a lot of coll a big collection, you could be like camera of the month from camera from timeshare. Mark's camera of the month. Right. And right. he sends you a camera <clears throat> and you every month uh, on a Thursday. And then you buy a bus and then you have the camera mobile that drives around town. <laughs> that's right. And then if you see the camera mobile, yeah. and he'll throw you a camera and you can uh, borrow it. <laughs> all great possibilities. <laughs> Lending cameras. It's we good. we have yeah, some great, great shows coming up with... Leslie Lazenby will be back on the show uh, with shows from Finlay, Ohio. We're going to have uh, our good friend, UK correspondent, Darren Riley. That's back. right. Yeah. Well, he's never been on there. He's been on the show briefly uh, when we did our London meetup, but uh, he's going to be on the show. We're going to be playing some live tunes. Yeah, that'll be and cool. Sitting at the table. That's right. Sitting at the table. Sipping tea. Mr. and Mrs. Darren Riley. Awesome. Yeah. Right. So we're going to see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>